Welcome back folks to the VIA pinstriping page. If you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for watching. So, today we're going to talk about reducing paint, reducing these pinstriping paints um, for pinstriping. And this is a topic that was brought up by a subscriber. Um, I do not remember the name of the subscriber, but he asked basically, how can you tell if your paint is over-reduced or too thinned, thinned out too much, or if it's uh, not thinned out enough? And <clears throat> this is a really difficult topic. Um, this is probably the most difficult topic in pinstriping because... It's all based off of getting the paint a correct consistency for you to be able to pull the line with the brush. And here I have a MAC uh, Blue Wrap, which is a 10 series, uh, double zero. They have green ones, and the green ones are just a slightly less uh, quality hair. The green ones are made for touching up paint jobs, uh, touching up stuff. Uh, these were kind of the better ones, so this is blue right and uh here you have a, a kafka uh, number three which are uh, you know my favorites basically and this is a mixed hair this one the kafkas are mixed synthetic and squirrel hair um, this mac is full squirrel hair only squirrel hair and here i have a uh, ted turner dragonfly which is fully synthetic right so the reason i'm telling you all that is because each one of these brushes, you would reduce the paint slightly different for each one of these brushes. Uh, you would reduce the paint slightly different depending on the paint. So you have some alpha here. Here I have some um, leaded violet one shot, right, in, in a can. And here I have some more alpha enamel. I've only ever dealt with the enamels, but <clears throat> So it's complicated because there's so many aspects that 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 um, that have to be understood. Uh, you can know these things, but if you do not put in the time and energy to practice regularly, you will never understand them. You have to understand how this feels in your hand. I don't use swords very very much. So I have a hard time with them, actually. But I'm going to do the, the, this demonstration with a sword. So I have a hard time understanding how that should feel in my hand. The Kafka's, all day. I, it already feels correct because this is, how, this is what I use, uh, mostly. All right? I'll use these for long lines, long straight lines, which I don't do a lot of. <clears throat> and um, so there's that. Then there's also different types of reducers. So you got stuff like mineral spirits, which I have right here. Uh, you can use uh, turpentine, pure gum, terp, terps, they call them, um, which I don't like because I think they stink. Uh, you can also use um, lacquer thinner, which immediately people will attack you if you use lacquer thinners. They do not use lacquer thinner, but it's also a reducer. It just happens to be a very strong one that isn't very friendly to your brushes. It also dries a little quicker. So... <clears throat> Uh, first and foremost, if you're going to give yourself any sort of fighting chance as a beginner, you need to agitate your paint. So if you already have it in bottles, which these are the PET bottles, it's a particular type of plastic. If you have it in bottles, you want to shake it up real good because there's oils that separate from the paint, from the pigment. And you want that to be very well agitated. And I'm going to show you that in this can of paint here. And you can see how there's kind of a brown film there on that can of paint or inside of that paint there. So I'm going to show you what that looks like once it gets mixed up. Let me get a popsicle stick. <clears throat> so before you do anything, you want to make sure that your paint is well agitated, mixed within itself to where you have a decent consistency before you start reducing now, some folks, um, I seen a video with Hot Rod Jen. Shout out to Hot Rod Jen. Um, she can actually just run paint straight out of 
uh, with particular colors straight out of the can and start pinstriping. Uh, but Jen is basically a master, you know, in the craft. So I think, um, I think that the margin of error for somebody like that is a lot bigger than for somebody like me or even a, a, especially somebody that is really just starting out. You know, I, I feel like I need the paint to be quite perfect. Um, and I feel like somebody like Jen or, you know, other folks that are masters of the craft, um, maybe they can get away with paint that's not quite perfectly mixed because they know how to how to manipulate the brush better. So there you go. That is nice and well agitated. And that is a good starting point. But I'm not going to use this can because I want to be able to squeeze a certain amount. So I'm going to use my bottle. Okay. This is going to be a sort of a lengthy video. So if you have a short attention span, you probably shouldn't be pinstriping. <clears throat> I've seen people, you go to show them, they've tried for years, and they go to pick up the brush, and you go to show them something, they're like, well, I can't, I just can't, I can't. Well, you know what, don't. <laughs> if you can't, don't. If you're going to keep telling yourself you can't, just stop. Go do something else. If you got, you know, a real, real short um, uh, patience, if you have no patience, this ain't for you. This, this is a test of one's patience because you're going to have months and months and months and months and months and months of garbage hot garbage i've been at it for seven years i still have days weeks of hot garbage where it seems like nothing's working out for me so this stuff really takes a while so here i'm going to try i got these two little um medical cups or just little plastic cups I'm going to try to put the same amount there at the bottom. I'm just going to cover the bottom with paint. There you go. There's one. This one's got some X's on it. And there's two. Right? Somewhat similar. So the one with the X, we're not going to put any reducer in. What I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to show you something else that's important. When you load the brush, you need to load it completely to the end. From front to end, or to beginning to, I don't know which, which side you want to call the front or the back. But anyways, all of these hairs need to be coated with paint. So I'm used to already dipping in the reducer, so I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to cover this thing in paint, and I'm going to palette the brush on this magazine. And I already, from doing this for years... I have an understanding of if that paint is feels good or not to me. Um, I have a little bit less of an understanding because this is a sword brush and I don't use them very often. But <clears throat> this feels smooth. And, and let me show you how that paint looks in there. It kind of moves. It moves, but not super fast, right? It's not like rolling back and forth uh, like waves. It's kind of just slowly, slowly moving a little at a time and as you're palleting uh, the air will actually get to it and start to evaporate uh, a little bit and it'll start to get a little tackier now this feels okay I I like to reduce a little bit more but just out of the just out of the can um, and and also when you load the brush sorry to, to get up on a tangent you have to understand, you don't want it slightly loaded. You don't want it looking like this when you go to put the brush in there. You don't want it saturated with paint. You want it loaded to where you can still sort of see the bristles. You can still sort of see the hairs. That's how you know if, you're, if your brush is well loaded all of the hairs are covered, but you can still sort of see them, kind of, right? And what's something you're going to see a lot of people do is just kind of dab a little bit of paint off the end there to kind of form the tip, right? So now we're going to try to pull a line here. And that paint is coming off there pretty good.
right? <clears throat> I'm trying not to breathe into <laughs> breathe into the uh, camera. So it still feels okay just as is. So I guess Jen is right with that. And again, I'm not very well versed with these uh, swords. Which is a shame because they're great. And I'm just... Um, what's the word? Stubborn. I like what I like. I use what I like and I always reach for what I like. <clears throat> so that is um, working just fine. It feels a little sticky, right? So now if I wanted to reduce, I would just dip a little bit into the mineral spirits, just the tip, and see how that feels. And again, this is an understanding, right? What you're seeing there is clearly something that works right the paint is a decent consistency to where that works uh, the stickier it starts to feel here the the less length you're going to get um, out of the paint maybe uh, the the more dry this is the, the thinner the line will probably get even though that also is depending on how much pressure you're pushing down so this is what it looks like when it's clearly the correct consistency the paint comes off of the brush in a way that actually sort of forms the brush to help it create a line. It's like a symbiotic relationship. That might not even be a real word. It just sounded good. <laughs> so, now, what I'm going to do is, um, I should probably clean this off. I'm going to clean off this brush real fast. I got some dirty mineral spirits here. Just a quick cleanse. And in that other cap, I'm going to drop some reducer in there and I'm going to mix it up to where it's over reduced. Over reduced paint. Right? And I can say, you know, depending on the humidity, depending on the heat, um, you know, this probably has tacked up just a little bit. So I'm going to do, I'm going to use this straw. And I'm just going to put one, two, let's try that. Let's see how that feels. I get another popsicle stick. Right. So now I'm looking at a paint that is kind of watery, right? It moves fast in that cup. So that tells me that it's over reduced, how it's moving super fast in there. Um, I wish I knew what that looks like. Maybe melted ice cream, right? It kind of looks like melted ice cream. It moves around fast. It, I still don't know how that feels. It might feel okay. Well, let's try it. I'm going to dip this brush in there. I'm going to completely cover it in paint. Not on the handle, but you know what I mean. Yeah, that actually feels okay. But again, the margin of error, you know, might be different for me than for you. Right? So, it's a little, little over-reduced. Let's over-reduce it some more. Let's put another couple drops. Right? Three drops. Let's try that. Let's see what that looks like. It's very, very reduced, right? Now, the air does evaporate the reducer. So, over time, this will become the correct uh, consistency. And again, <laughs> that's sort of an understanding that you will have. So now let me show you what this looks like, right? So, what's going to happen is it will blotch out. You'll have less control. Uh, you're going to get fatter, probably thicker lines. The paint will be a little translucent. Um, yeah, you lose a lot of control then. If you go to hit turns and such, which 
I probably should have done this with the brush I like, but if you try to hit turns, you might skid out, right? Uh, it's wor it's working okay for me, but man, it's it's so hard to explain. It's because I I'm doing everything to correct it, you know. I would imagine somebody that that is just starting out might be uh, more like that pushing down too hard you know lifting up and pushing and pushing up and getting a funky because they don't know how it feels right so you get that that nasty chunky line it's just a it's a thing that you have to learn through practice and it's like the most complicated thing to explain, but it's the most important thing that needs to be understood. I mean, you kind of learn it on your own over time. Um, if you take a class and, and, and you get a hands-on instructor that knows what he's doing, it might would help. You know, I feel, okay, let's just say it will help because it'll kind of give you an idea. But if you don't uh, sit there and keep trying and keep practicing, uh, you will never really understand what sort of paint consistency you prefer because everybody's going to have their own preference. And uh, what type of line you want to make. You might be the type of person that wants to make extremely fine lines. <clears throat> you might be the type of person that likes that old school thicker line. So, now that I've shown you sort of what over-reduced paint looks like, let me show you what uh, paint that has dried up too much looks like. First off, it's going to feel extremely sticky. <clears throat> Your brush hairs are going to want to clump up on you. You're going to feel a ton of drag on the magazine, on the paint. Now, I'm gonna go this way. And what will happen is, <laughs> again, I'm, I'm gonna try everything to not correct it in my hand. What's gonna happen is you'll probably get well, for one, a thinner line, man. <laughs> it's going to skip out on you. I can't not do what I normally do, folks. It's so freaking difficult. But you're going to have something like that. It, 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 it skips. You're going to have skipping, okay? Um, <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's such a ridiculous thing to try to teach because it's so hard hard to explain verbally and it's just going to take time folks if you're just starting out if you got a month in two months in a few months in and you're struggling just keep going practice more often if you're only practicing once a month forget about it forget about it you're never going to get it if you're practicing let's say minimum three times a week for an hour a week, you're going to get it over time. You know, whatever level you might reach or whatever, you'll be able to pinstripe. Um, there's plenty of instructions out there. Um, but there's so many variables. The, the type of brush you're using. Um, the temperature that you're doing it in. Please try, try this in a climate-controlled environment. Don't put yourself in the heat and put yourself in a disadvantage. Um, you know, take a little bit of paint off the tip there to give yourself a nice clean tip, right? Get yourself a couple of different brushes. That way you can sort of see which one you like better. There's uh, many va variations of the Mac. So there's the Von Dago brushes, which are great. Uh, there's the uh, King 13 um, Hansen model, which is great. Uh, 
There's, there's um, now the Jason Mraz, Mr. Oz brushes. There's the Triple Hippie. There's the uh, Kelly, Kelly Mac. Um, there's a lot of great brushes that Mac has. I'd suggest you get three of them. Um, I, you know, I think the double zero is a pretty good size or the zero and just see which one you like. And the paint consistency thing will just kind of arrive on its own through an understanding through your practice. You know, I set all this up so I could try to explain it and it just so hard to really explain because I just feel it. It's like a feeling. It's like when you first drive, you're all skittish, right? You're afraid of like getting on the interstate and and uh, you need like a little compact car if you can. I, I started off with a damn Camaro stick shift, so I kind of learned the hard way. <laughs> but you're afraid to get on the interstate, you know, you're all skittish, you're like leaning over too much and, and you can't parallel park. And then years later, what, you drive an hour home or something and it and you don't even remember how you got there because it's become second nature it's like you know i'm trying to make this line skip but i can't because it's now become second nature to avoid that no matter how reduced here i'm going to reduce the hell out of it extremely reduced okay i'm going to it's extremely reduced uh, See, like I'm waiting it out to where it feels better because it's starting to evaporate. It's very much reduced. But it's just become second nature because I practice a lot. And sure, none of that's great, but, you know, it'll get you done. You can get a design done. You can get better at it. So, that's my rant on paint reduction. Make sure you stir the paint and agitate it to get yourself in a good starting point. Make sure your brush is clean and dry. No moisture on here. Um, listen to other folks' opinions because I'm not the end-all be-all. I'm just a fella giving my opinion, right? So uh, this is just opinionated here. There's plenty of other folks that might give you a better instruction or different instruction. You gather a little bit of all of them and you make it your own, right? Um, don't try using watercolors. Water, I see people hollering at me. They're like, hey, why can't I use water colors for this? It, it, don't do it. Don't use acrylic. Um, get yourself some pinstriping paint. You know, you got alpha, you got one shot. Um... Those are really the two that I could think of. I know that there are urethanes, but I don't really can't really speak on urethanes. Um, there's now Ronin, Ronin, uh, the one stroke. You can get that. There's Roth enamels. So there's various enamels that you can get that are made for this. I would suggest you get the reducer that they sell if you can. It'll get you also in a, in a better spot because, um, you know, Alpha makes their own reducer. So why not use their reducer if you can afford it, if you can get it. Uh, I use Mineral Spirits because it's what I'm used to. I've gotten used to it and it's readily available at any hardware store. Feel free to use that. Although, there's probably people out there that are going to tell you that's wrong. That is their opinion. This is my opinion. <clears throat> Sorry if I sound a little frustrated. It's just so hard to describe this stuff. <laughs> So, I made a mess. Um, uh, this is a 20 minute video. It's not too bad. Thank you so much for watching, y'all. Thank you all for checking out my videos. Thank you all for the love and support. Um, in the description below, you're going to find some links to Amazon. And if you buy anything through them links, it does uh, give me a little bit of cash at no extra cost to you. So, buy a boat, buy a house through them links. Buy big, expensive rings. Ooh, look at that. See what happens when you turn. Uh, into a business channel. <laughs> oh, uh, and listen to Pinstripers podcast. You can find it on mm, uh, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, and and Spotify currently, and Google Podcast. It's a podcast that uh, my friend Jack Fleming and I have created, and it's all about pinstripers, uh, two pinstripers interviewing other pinstripers. So that's the business. Good luck. 
have some patience, folks. If you're just starting out, um, you're going to get it. You just got to practice regularly. If you keep putting this thing down, you're never going to learn. You're never going to understand. Okay. Thank you all for watching. I'm going to clean this crap up. Have a good day.